Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, IFRI and IPSA for uh, uh, organization and the kind invitation. Uh, also, uh, I welcome uh, my dear professors, uh, Professor Kaspar, Professor Rez, and Professor Bedewi. Uh, I will talk uh, about progesterone uh, in HRT preparation before frozen embryo transfer. Uh, first, uh, by the end of this lecture, uh, we should answer all of these questions. Which formulation do we use? What is the dose? What is the duration of lethal phase support? Do we need to measure serum progesterone before embryo transfer or not? So first, why progesterone? Program the frozen embryo transfer regimen uses suppression of natural menstrual cycle with or without use of general H agonist. So it requires uh, exogenous supplementation with estrogen and the progesterone to achieve adequate proliferative and secretory changes in the endometrium for preparation of implantation and early pregnancy support. So which formulation we choose? We have a lot of uh, formulations such as micronized progesterone for either oral or vaginal uh, and uh, oral uh, progesterone, dihydrogesterone, uh, vaginal tablets such as endometrin, uh, vaginal suppositories or, and rectal suppositories, uh, vaginal gel, uh, intramuscular formulation and subcutaneous uh, formulation. If you compare intramuscular and the vaginal formulation, intramuscular uh, progesterone provides the highest level of circulating prog serum progesterone, yet requires a painful injection. On the other hand, vaginal progesterone is readily absorbed by the, by the vaginal epithelium and appear to be at, at higher level uh, uh, within the endometrium. So it may be selective uh, absorption uh, through the vagina. But some studies showed that regimens including only vaginal progesterone was inferior to those included uh, with uh, intramuscular progesterone. Thus, despite pain and inconvenience by patients, intramuscular progesterone is still be in most of the protocols for uh, lutel phase support for HRT cycles. These studies such as uh, uh, Dr. Bidewi said, uh, intramuscular progesterone uh, uh, supplemented every third day didn't improve a pregnancy rate uh, uh, in combination with vaginal progesterone. Uh, what about subcutaneous? Subcutaneous uh, progesterone, there was two randomized controlled trials uh, compared uh, subcutaneous versus vaginal. It showed non-inferiority of subcutaneous progesterone versus uh, vaginal preparations. Oral progesterone, micronized progesterone, many trials showed that it is inferior to vaginal pro progesterone and intramuscular progesterone. On the other hand, diet progesterone, there was a two retrospective studies for, for, uh, from China showed equal efficacy between diet progesterone and uh, vaginal uh, and intramuscular uh, preparations. Also, Lotus trial, which is a multi-center trial comparing 30 milligram of oral dihydrogesterone versus 8% to micronized vaginal progesterone, it showed a similar effect with, uh, du during retail phase support. So we can conclude that oral administration of progesterone, excluding dihydrogesterone, is associated with inferior outcomes compared with intramuscular and vaginal administration. Also can conclude in the absence of clear data of superiority of either vaginal or intramuscular progesterone in programmed frozen embryo transfer cycle, we should consider patient acceptance, convenience, patient potential complications, and cost before deciding which to choose either vaginal or intramuscular. What about those? As regards intramuscular, most studies showed that average dose is from 50 to 100 milligram per day. Subcutaneous, the lowest dose, which is 25 milligram per day, was effective in pre-decidual changes, which is a physiological amount to produce the daily by the ovary during the mid-luteal phase. There are ma many vaginal formulations, such as vaginal gel, which is cranial gel, uh, 90 milligram twice daily, vaginal capsules, 200 milligram three times daily, vaginal suppository, 400 milligram twice daily. This study compare intramuscular root, oral, and vaginal root as regards serum progesterone 
biopsy results or endometrial effect, and the pregnancy rate. Intramuscular route showed the highest serum level of progesterone. On the other hand, vaginal route showed the highest endometrial effect, which was 80% of cases showed endometrial effect. On the other hand, oral route, which is inferior in both serum progesterone level and endometrial level, and also associated with lower pregnancy rate. So we can conclude another conclusion. Adjust those according to the protocol use, previous history of the patient, and body mass index of the patient. So coming to the next question, do you need to measure serum progesterone before transfer or not? This paper was done on 328 cycle. It was a prospective cohort study using 100 milligram intramuscular progesterone. It showed that cases with serum progesterone less than 13 milligram, nanogram per ml was inferior and was significantly lower pregnancy rate as compared to cases with a serum progesterone more than 13 nanogram per ml. So after using 100 milligram intramuscular progesterone, if the serum level was lower than 13 nanogram per ml, you expect a lower pregnancy rate. Another study uh, this month if, uh, in, in RPM online, it showed that if, uh, there is more evidence regarding the importance of serum progesterone concentration before frozen embryo transfer, and it showed a linear correlation between serum progesterone and leave birth rate. It also concluded that there is some factors uh, affecting serum progesterone level uh, during intramuscular injection, which was the age of the patient, weight of the patient, or muddy mass index, timing of blood sample. If you take a blood sample late uh, in the day, it, it has a lower serum level of progesterone. Also, previous history of lower serum progesterone, less than 10 uh, nanogram per ml in previous cycle, had a deleterious effect on serum progesterone level. But does serum level differ from vaginal to, uh, to intramuscular root? Actually, yes. This was uh, concluded by Laparta in 2017. Another question, is there is an upper limit for serum progesterone that is harmful for implantation? It is still a debatable. Some studies, one study by Alisberg said that by the vaginal root, if you exceed 14 nanogram per ml, it may affect uh, implantation and pregnancy rate. Another study by Kofinas said that if you exceed 20 nanogram per ml after intramuscular injection, it may be deleterious or harmful for implantation. I will invite our dear professors after uh, this talk to share uh, their opinion about this point. Is there is any deleterious effect of exceeding some uh, levels of serum progesterone on implantation or not? Also, factors affecting serum progesterone after vaginal root is sexual intercourse, poor patient compliance, differences in vaginal absorption, distribution, and metabolism of progesterone. So, conclusion number three, serum progesterone on day of embryo transfer may be a good predictor of implantation. Uh, our last question is, what is the duration of luteal phase support after HRT cycles? Due to the lack of corpus luteum, luteal phase support medication should be continued for uh, up to 12 weeks in case of a pregnancy in order to maintain serum estrogen to progesterone. But you can taper estrogen after 12 days of embryo transfer and it results to a similar clinical pregnancy rate, uh, such as if you, contain, if you continued the same level of estrogen. This is, is the last slide. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, Professor Mahdi, for an excellent overview. Thank Indeed, you. Indeed, it's a very good presentation. And I will ask Professor Kasper and Professor Mahdi to help me, to help me bec because we have tons of questions and we cannot uh, state them all. So I will ask Professor Kasper and Mahdi to help me. Uh, Professor uh, David Mendoza, do you think that person's stress can affect the amount of progesterone applied? This means that it secretes too much cortisol and destroys the hormone, as such as BMI effects. Okay. 
I don't, I don't know. You think stress possible. is related? To, you don't. I don't know. Possible. Dr. Ashraf Awali, any recommendations for recurrent implantation failure cases? Mute. Recurrent implantation failure cases. Uh, Professor Casper. Professor Riz. Casper Riz, uh, you. Um, Professor Casper. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think there are other things going on in recurrent oh. pregnancy loss cases rather than just uh, progesterone levels. So I think uh, uh, either they're you know the chromosomal problems or. Um, there may be uh, autoimmune or thrombophilia problems, and the progesterone level is not really the, the main issue at that situation. But uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess any, it depends on the preferable you, method. I, I guess if you keep the progesterone going in patients that you think might have a luteal phase defect or something, that might prevent uh, miscarriage. But uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a very unclear area. What Any preferable that, method for else, endometrium? Dr. Hassan, who can ask? Any preferable method for thin endometrium? No. I am asking, Amadi. I am asking. I am asking. I am asking the question. Any preferable method for thin endometrium? I ask. Uh, thin. I, in my opinion, thin endometrium. I tried uh, extending a phase of estradiol, increasing doses of estradiol. We can use another adjuvant with estradiol, such as uh, sildenafil. It may it may have effect, or I can may change the protocol of uh, preparation. If there is associated thin endometrium with artificial or with HRT cycle, I can use a stimulation or a modified natural cycle, it may have a, a better effect on the endometrium because sometimes a endometrium respond more to the natural estradiol than the artificial one. For Professor Casper, does it make a difference if you start progesterone at seven, eight or nine millimeter of endometrial thickness? Yeah, I think the, the thicker the endometrium, but starting the better. I, like, uh, I don't like to see patients with seven millimeters. I, I'd rather see eight or nine before I start. 